Hello, Kent. How are you doing? How you doing, Russell? All right. We on we? Keeping all right. Six year today, Kent. Big anniversary today, Russell. Brilliant. Uh, six year poker's corner, a eh? pop pop bang. It's been a slog. Well, it's, it's like it's like it's like anything. It's anything worthwhile isn't going to be easy, is it? No. it? Never is. No. Uh, has Eddie got in through the back door, the cat flap, or like the rat he is under the door? I think a lot of this is down to Tyson Fury. And I'll I'm just explain. thinking that myself. But because th- this is this is all plan B. All this all this card is a last minute plan B because he's not reliable. Tyson Fury is not reliable. And mm-hmm. what they've done now is that basically if if it comes to February and Fury doesn't want to fight anymore or doesn't fight. You've got a mega fight there between Wilder and Joshua. Exactly. Fury's in the right position now. When he he could easily spit his dummy out and say, "I got rid of Vladimir and got them all eating, and then it all went stale with Joshua milking it. I've come back, done all of this, and put everybody in position. That's what he'll do now. And, and this, this, what this will do? That this will really test him. Yeah. Because there's no excuse now. Ah, oh, there's no fights around, and I can't do this. And right now, any fight, any fight can be made for Fury. You know that the AJ fight now is absolutely easy to make because they're all they're all under the same umbrella. They're all yeah. under, you know, the same the same banner now. So there's no excuse now. AJ didn't want to fight me, and I couldn't do this. He, th- this will really test. This will, will will really really see the resolve of Tyson Fury. Personally, I don't think he comes back. I've already said that, and you know, for 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 me to for me to say this, I thought originally the deal would have been with with Warren. It would have been an exclusive deal where they don't work with any other promoters. Because he's got the leverage, he had Tyson Fury, and now all of a sudden, you know, Spencer Brown said straight away after the the Ngannou fight, yeah, he will be fighting in twenty third. Now he's not fighting, so as I say, they have went in and they have brought uh, they have brought another fighter in, they brought another promotional outfit in with them to help them build their brand in their country, and and. Uh, it's like if he doesn't want to fight, we'll get AJ and we'll get Wilder and they'll fight. Simple as that. Do you think that uh, Brick Top and Eddie need each other? Absolutely. I I think Eddie needs I think Eddie needs Brick Top more than Brick Top needs him. Yeah. But it it's good that they're working the gallery. You know, it's good that let's let's be honest. Frank Ward has all the leverage at heavyweight, all of it. He has Fury. He has uh, Dubois. He has Joyce. He has Zhang. So where, where, where other is AJ going to get these big fights from? He's working with Wardley. Fabio Wardley's saying now. Fabio Wardley's with him. So where is AJ now really going to get a big fight. So, and in, in the heavyweight division, he kind of, he kind of dictates the pieces like, like a chess, like a chess board. And I think, I think for Eddie to make money and for Eddie to put on events, he's going to have to work with Frank Warren because Frank Warren has got too much leverage at, at heavyweight. Promoting those wee shows in Mexico, all over, all over America, with, with flyweight shows and, we fights in casinos is all good and all, but that's not where the money is. Do you think that Eddie put all his eggs in one basket with Big Meech? I think, I think he had to because 
who else outside of Big Beach is there for him that's going to sell? Dylan White. <laughs> he can't even pass a drug test, Russell. Never mind, sell fight. Russia Ben. No, he's he's Nigel's son. And the bomb. He's crap. <laughs> well, they've had to get an Australian in and a Russian who nobody understands. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's 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 where he's at. You know, that's where he's at now, isn't it? Uh, we're talking about Sonny Edwards and Bob Rodriguez. It'll be empty. No, nobody will go to it. It'll be empty. It is, a, it is a glorified big run now, isn't it? I always say this about Eddie. He, he, he makes a lot of mistakes. He's made a lot, a lot of mistakes, a lot of avoidable mistakes that would have led to him making a lot of money and getting his fighters a lot more better opportunities and fighting on other platforms. And that whole thing, he, the first thing he said was when he went to America is, I'm going to destroy the American pay per view model. It's not worth. It's not working. It's broken. It's a fa- it's a failed concept. He's not saying that now. Yeah. What did you think to Big Meech's performance at the press of Kent? I loved it. I'll say it's the first time I actually seen. And I'm not. I'm. I'm not an AJ fan, but I absolutely loved it. It was, he actually came across for the first time ever being genuine. Yeah. Do Do you think so? Yeah. Well, he's got no, got no. He's played all that manufactured and now, and they stay humble and eat all your greens and all that. That's all died to death, hasn't it? That now. That's gone. That's finished. That That's the most genuine. Age, and I actually liked it because I knew it was organic. I knew it was genuine. It wasn't. It wasn't the big cheesy smile and you know say your prayers, eat your vitamins, all that crap. It, it was him actually being himself, and I actually liked how he stepped in for for Daniel Dubois. I liked it. He, he seemed uh, just normal, and if he can just be himself, I think people will gravitate towards him more. But this this whole manufactured athlete, you know, media trained athlete. Nobody buys that crap anymore. Do you think that uh, Daniel DeBar is going to have to up his conversation if he's going to keep that fit bird he's got? Has he got a bird? He's got a bird now, apparently. Flipping hack. Oh. I don't know. I just think he, 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 he doesn't connect too well. He tried to connect yesterday. And it, it just didn't work, and that's why Big Meech stepped in. But I think I think this is a fight that's gonna it's gonna test him. I think it's gonna test him more mentally, you know, emotionally in the build up than, than actually being in the ring. I think I think the fight outside, you know, obviously in press conferences is gonna be harder on the inside. You know, let's be honest, Big Baby Miller in his last fight was twenty four stone, so. It's not the big baby Miller what we were watching five years ago. He was throwing 80 to 100 punches around, full of drugs. He's 24 stone and active now. So I think he, I think if you're looking at this fight, I think Dubois should just run right through him. He's a big fat butter bean job, isn't he? He's a big fat scumbag, you know. And there's Spencer Oliver for two years, has been rinsing Nigel's son about two field tests and it's not fair and all. And, you know, he, you know, he, he suffered an injury in the ring and, you know, he feels very strongly about drug cheats, but he was sitting down yesterday smiling with him and taking him for an interview in talk sport. Did you see that? Steve it, mate. I had slurping, mate, while I was... I was near sick. I thought, what was that? So I popped my head around looked at Tally. And there's him there slurping and just wiping his mouth after Miller just relieved himself inside Juggiers. I couldn't believe I'll say what it. I was seeing it. It, 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 it was embarrassing. It was, it was actually revolting. So it was, it, it was absolutely, I didn't watch it, 
I couldn't watch. I After think all I that Connor Ben roasting, it was sat on Miller's knee like a little puppet. It, he, it was like Spencer Big. Yeah, it was absolutely. It was disgraceful. Honestly, this is a guy that, that that's been going on about, you know, drugs and sport and and fighters and you know ethically it doesn't stand by him and he's sitting he's sitting with big pharmacy Miller. You know, somebody that's failed three tests. You know, he failed a K1 test as well and has failed twice as a professional. A boxer, it, it just doesn't sit right with me, I think. I think it's, I think he needs to be called out on it. I think somebody needs to call him out and say, you know what, Joe Gears, where's all this? You know, why, why can I... There's the same why, energy. Why can I on Nigel's son, knock off Nigel's son, but but you're sitting. I, it was it was wrong for me. It, it was it was just really bad. It was really really bad, and he, he really made himself look like an absolute weapon. You know, two years of that, that that, that he's just an absolute hypocrite. It's like so they're all scared to mention drug testing in front of Saudis, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, even there there was something yesterday that they said that. Is there going to be a, an alternate, you know, a substitute fighter in case anyone fails to test? Can you imagine? Yeah, breaks up with the drugs the day, test? Day, didn't Yeah, yeah. Can, can you imagine somebody failing a test out there? <laughs> hey, we'd not get to know about that, would we? Well, it's it seems to be now that, you know, you, you can fail a test and you'll not find out if you fail the test for a year later and you're allowed to fight, so... It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, Russell. What about Eddie's role in all this, though? What a groveler, eh? What it, it, a it's, it, 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 I can't get my head around it. Okay, you know, I, uh, it, Ken. You know what's I, going on? Bricktop's only gone into men's room. He's opened the crombie, and Eddie's down below slurping. That's what's that's going on there. And he's got ginger pubes, Bricktop. Oh, I, go I, on, I, I just can't get my head around it. You know, it, two weeks ago, I, I have never seen the, the velocity of their feud like for the last two, two weeks has been probably the worst that's ever been. You know, you've got Frank Smith. You, you've got uh, Blurp, Frank Warren hammering each other, hammering each other every day. It seems really, really personal between them. And all of a sudden, and you know what it's called, don't you? What what it's known as down there, it's called a reach around. <laughs> Honestly, it 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 it. I... It's a double reach around. And and to see them all, you know, shaking hands and being professional, and it it. <sighs> It's it's bizarre. It really is slurp, bizarre. Slurp, slurp. I think Frank hates it. Frank absolutely hates it because he wanted to be the sole proprietor of this event. He wanted to be the the big promoter. He wanted to be the only name. Now Eddie's been brought in because Fury is unreliable. Brick Eddie's turned around. Ken bricked up. He's pimping Eddie out. And, and Eddie's like, great. I knew this is my way in because grateful looked, Eddie, groveling, it, grateful Eddie. It look, uh, this is my way in because Fury's unreliable. This is great. This is gonna be, and you, you're gonna see, you know, who's gonna be playing the moves behind each other's backs. They get so exclusive. You know, so be be to have so exclusivity of this. You know, so it's going to be really, really interesting, really interesting. But it, uh, the first time I seen it, I said to myself, hell has just frozen over. Yeah, listen, do you know all that? What they've been doing to each other for 40 years or whatever. They've been at it, aren't they? The Hills lot, the, the Ant Hills mob and uh, Brick Tops firm. They've been at it years. Now all of a sudden, because there's a few quid on the table, They've all turned into slurp, slurp, slurpers. This goes back even before boxing, Russell. You do know that, don't you? They did a bit with snooker, didn't they? 
Well, even before that, so so Frank Warren, his business, his first business was cigarette oh, machines, yeah, yeah, yeah. slot machines, and pool machines. So so he did that all around like London or whatever. Then Barry Hearn had the same business outside of London, like of Essex and Norwich, all around there. He done the cigarette machines and the slot machines. But I think Hearn went to London and they started becoming like like rivals. You know, around the pubs and you know, with the slot machines and the cigarette machines and the the pool tables. So that that's how they started off as rivals. This was this goes back even before boxing, even before snooker. Yeah, well, fuck them. They're a pair of pricks. All I want to know is why Wilder is on that card and Big Meech, and they're not getting at it. I think it's that. This is. I'll tell you why. That this. The reason they're not getting at it now is because twenty third was always going to happen. Yeah. Twenty twenty third of December was a done deal. The card was, you know, basically organized. Fighters were in position. It was. It was. It was done. Now Fury has pulled out of that, and it's left a massive void and 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 on the card. So rather than them and say, you know what, we're going to scrap the card and wait for Fury. Nah, they're, they, they're not going to do that. They, he, they know he's not reliable and it wouldn't look good in Emmons, you know, for the whole infrastructure of the event, getting the event build up for them and just to start canceling stuff after one show. It would look really bad. Yeah. Really bad. Uh... Really bad, and I I can understand the the why Wilder and and Joshua isn't happening now. This is kind they have signed a bout agreement. They've signed well, I think it's a two fight minimum two fight bout agreement. So I think in the bout agreement, it is going to happen that that while Wilder and Fury fight, but this fight right now is basically to save the twenty third. And the Wilder and Joshua fight will be possibly there if Fury and Usyk doesn't happen on on the on the the I think it's the nineteenth of February something like that there. Yeah. It's... So you can understand you can understand the logic why it's not happening now. I couldn't believe. That they got it done, could you? No, it was it was. I heard whispers all week about stuff, and and you always take it with a pinch of salt, especially in boxing. And when I seen the card, I was at, I was actually sitting at work yesterday, and I seen the poster. I, I couldn't believe it. I, w- I was astounded. I was absolutely astounded, and seeing seeing Bricktop and 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 Eddie on the same platform on the same press conference on the same stage at the same top table, I, I was absolutely flabbergasted. Do you know what I'm sick of hearing, Kent? That they've uh, they've done it for fans. Well, who can afford to keep traipsing out there at thousands of thousands of pounds at a time? Right? So, yeah, fair enough. It's like going to Vegas, isn't it? But you can't have a beer out there and do what you want, can you? No, and it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's not about the fans. It's about the networks. It's about the platforms. It's about making money. Have they sold out, do you think? They always sold out. They, they always sold out. They, they sold out when they started going to Vegas. They, they sold out a long time ago, so they did. Uh, th- this now... I tell you what, if you were Vegas and 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 you were American boxing, you would be you would be really worried right now, wouldn't you? Really worried. Yeah, you would want you, but Lou DiBella uh, and Paulie Malignaggi will be howling this morning, knowing that Eddie's had to slurp, slurp, slurp. (sighs) 
It's just a marriage of convenience, really, isn't it? Marriage of convenience. Yeah, but to see the slurping, it were oh, it were groveling on a new level for Eddie Hills. I mean, I've never seen the Iceman grovel like that, groveling like that, slurping. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, it looks funny because they've all been told to behave themselves. You can see that, you know, you can you can see that the the the, the knives are definitely in the back. But they have to. They'll have to behave themselves there, and it's funny you see all that yesterday. Frank Smith not to be seen anywhere. You know, no you word know, to be. You know, Bricktop reminded me of yesterday. He reminded me of Billy Bremner in his pomp at Leeds United, preening like a peacock. You know, in that nineteen seventy team, preening like yeah. a peacock in the centre of that park, spraying it all over with that left foot, little Billy. Mm. It reminded me of him preening on his territory. That was Bricktop yesterday, wasn't it, at Wembley? Absolutely. Like what? Peacock. But but why is he, you know, if, if I was him, I would be saying, I'm actually disappointed here that they had to bring another promoter in outside of me to put this show on. He's nothing to be proud about. You know, that this is all about because one of his fighters is unreliable. This is why Eddie Hearn's been brought in. So why would he be like that? Is it pride or is it stupidity? I don't know, mate, but the sucking is out of control, Kent. What I've seen. Slurpers. Grown men, these are, Kent. Grown I'm just men. Dis- I'm just disappointed that... Let the uh, Vaseline Martin- out. I'm, I'm just disappointed that Martin Bacoli's not on. Oh, him? Yep. He's uh, the man with the world's biggest feet. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at Martin Bacoli, isn't I? Oh, buffalo feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. That's the only thing I can say about the card. Uh, the card is fantastic, to be honest. You, you can't, you couldn't knock that card. But I fought Martin Bacoli. He, he might be injured or, or something like that, but it would have been good to see Martin Bacoli on that card. Does Wilder light Parker up, Kent? Yes or no? Two rounds. A round, if that. Is it Button Moon, Kent? Button Moon. Absolutely. He's going to put him in the, a, a different stratosphere. Parker looked terrified. Sat there. <laughs> he did. Wilder were around. talking about... Uh, how he, he put how he does what he does and people fear him and all that and scared to death and all that. It was pretty scary, wasn't it? It was quite chilly, wasn't it? It he it gets very dark, doesn't he? he did you he see be... did you see Joshua's face when camera turned to him? He was white as a sheep. Yeah, he, he goes in the dark zone, so he does. He he's very spiteful and in that time in that time, when he's in that zone and he's in that mode, I actually believe what he's saying. He actually, he actually believes what he's saying, and that's the that's the scary part with with Wilder. All fa- all he, fighters are, are like him are like that. You know, all the greats, Frock, he's like that man. They have that inner summit inside, and they just want to do damage. It's like. You know, we have press conferences, and and a lot of time people say every everything everything is staged, and you know I don't agree with that. I I agree with the fighter is in that mode emotionally at that time. You know that's how they feel at that time emotionally, and it's yeah. really really hard to hide that when you're in that mode and you're in that fighter zone. Yeah, and I seen Parker yesterday. Look. I, Look absolutely terrified. Can you imagine Parker walking to the ring? You were trembling, in that fight? mate. You were trembling in Wilder's presence, mate. You were trembling. He, he was, and he's probably said to himself, I hope, I hope I'm getting well paid for this. <laughs> mate, you were trembling. The fear. Wilder, Wilder would have smelt that, mate. Oh, you would have smelt it. Yeah, yeah. Like Hannibal yeah. Lecter, mate, wasn't it? Oh. He's a monster. He would tremble in the man's presence. 
He's Wilder is a monster. So he is. He he the even three. looks. T- he even looks terrifying. I I remember a lot of years back that that Tony Bellew was hammering him on uh, Twitter, and and they brought him over to do commentary at the at the. And Bellew filled his nappy. Yes, he did. He says he says Wilder come over to him and put his arms out. You no, know, like to give him a hug. And he, he hugged him, he says. And he, he says, I've never felt anyone as strong. You know, like very strong. And he says, I don't want any I don't want any part of you. You're you're too big. Yeah. He could not believe it's his still size. His nappy and crawled away. Crawled, I, I he see, disappeared I, for about an hour. I, I I met Wilder once. I didn't meet him, but I was in the same uh Corridor as him, he was trembling. And he was he he's a monster. He really, really is a monster. And and I uh, I'll tell you better still. I found, I actually spoke to him briefly, and I found him far more friendly than Tyson Fury. He's right, good mates with Richard Towers, you know, uh, Dante Wilder. I found him a lot more friendly than Tyson Fury. Well, you know when they get going into sparring, mate, the trembling fighters are getting in there to sparring, mate, and they're shaking like leaves. You know, like leaves in autumn, they're shaking like that, mate. Just getting, just getting near the guy is savage. His mentality is completely different. You know, he's not a boxer. He doesn't have great boxing IQ. What he has. Is monster par, and you know when you know when fighters go in the sparring, and you're maybe sparring three to four times a week, and one day you'll say, you know what, I've had a hard week. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take the foot off. I'm just gonna have an easy day today. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna, you know. He's not like that. He he just wants to absolutely obliterate anybody in his way and he doesn't see it like that and you see it in the way he fights you know you see it in his personality and 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 in in his his demeanor as a fighter he's an absolute monster he said I, didn't I, he kent that uh when fighters see what he does you know how he just lights them up they see that and they think i don't want to be that person don't they because you only got to get that certain spot on ed at right time, aren't you? And it's that's it, isn't it? He's hungry. He's he, he's always maintained his hunger. You know that this is a guy at one stage started boxing late. He he worked as a delivery driver for Coca Cola. He had a, a sick young daughter. He couldn't afford, you know, her medical care. This is a really hungry guy, and he's still, you know, what do you what what do you can say about? Deontay's skill set and uh, as a fighter, and he, he says some silly things at times, and but his hunger has not changed. It, his his hunger for 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 who he is right now. He's a multi multi millionaire, but he hasn't changed from the minute he turned pro. He's still got that savage mentality. Yeah, they fear him there, don't they? Joshua fears him, don't he? See, to be honest with you, Russell, I I don't know. I I don't know. I I think that AJ, if AJ goes and beats Wilder, what does that do for Fury CV? Well, Fury CV is not that good anyway when you scratch the surface. Yeah, yeah. But what, what does that do to it? Fury CV is good, but they're not. He's not goat material like the making out. Is it still good though? But he's not goat. He's not a goat yet, is he? No, but but what what would it do? You know, everyone talks about yeah. You've got uh, you've got, you know, Fury CV beat Wilder three times. What would happen if if Big Meech goes out there and does a demolition job on him? 
Honestly, what does that do to his CV? Yeah. Yeah. Well, big time. Big yeah. time. If big big beach is in the mix now, though, isn't it? He's got in under the door where, where rats get in. There's the sneaked in through under the door. They've got a Russian Aussie and Big Meech who's scared of his own shadow on the show. That's what it's become for Eddie now, isn't it? Slurp, slurp, slurp. It's hell has just frozen over. I'll say. Did you see Gareth A. Davis? Waxing lyrical about two worlds colliding at the presser. God, he was going out of his mind, wasn't he? Hey, so what? Bob Arum and Don King worked together. It should have been happened years ago. You've cost us 13 years of great fights. Listen, see this card, Russell. This isn't nothing. This is nothing that we have not seen before. That you know, Don King, Don King, Bob Arum. Cedric Kushner, we're putting on heavyweight shows like this for years, years. Look, Main events, Cappy Dover. Look at the old, look at the old Mike Tyson. Go back, go back and look at the undercard of the old Mike Tyson bills. You know what e- I mean? Even better, you know, look back. I remember as a kid reading Boxing News and looking at it used to be a wee part in the box of news where it told you the dates and the shows and who promoted. And I remember Lennox, Lennox Lewis, Lenhart Promotions with Panix Promotions used to put on absolutely top drawer, top, top drawer on their cards and on Lennox Lewis cards. They were brilliant, brilliant, brilliant on their cards. So this is nothing. This is nothing. Out of the ordinary for me. I, I've seen great cards before. This this is nothing new for me. Nothing new. There ain't a world title fight for Ebby's on this, is there? There doesn't need to be, Russell. Yeah. You don't need to have you don't need to have world title fights to have good fights. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't. Do you think Dylan White could gate crash it with all this legal stuff they're going on about with his case and that? I don't see Eddie Hearn with the same energy for Dylan White as he had for Nigel's son. Do you think it's because he works with Bricktop with that Fury one? I don't know because... He was. He brought him back in, Russell. Yeah. He brought him back in. So, you know, it would be hard for a promoter to turn around and say, right, I lost the purse bids. They won the purse bids. Don't go and take that money. It, it would be hard to be whatever type of promoter you were. You, yeah. you couldn't argue with that, really. So you couldn't. Yeah. Do you think Dylan might have to go to uh, UFC to go living then now that you know, it could be on scrap heap in boxing. UFC will not take him on. No. Nah, no chance. Where do you see Derek Warchizora's role in this, aka Scooby Doo? I don't see what his role. He, he looks like he's one of those guys. He looks like a Saudi fixer, doesn't he? At the moment, he, he's getting on like. You seen him yesterday speaking to Frank Warren before the interview and all and say this and say that. He's not even a good gatekeeper now, though, is he? Oh, Derek Watches all right. The gate's well closed now. The gate's well closed. The gate's locked. It's like just some guy now will will get knocked about by up and coming, really, isn't he now? I'm actually just glad he's not on that show for his own safety. He'll be rocking up there with his begging bowl. Don't you worry about war. War, listen, it's a war just for him to get out of bed really in the morning. Is that shot? He's 14, isn't he, this week? It could be worse. It could be him against uh, Deontay Wilder. He's 40 year old, mate. He's he's going to get lit up if he fights again, isn't he? War. war. I could see him against Francis. Oh, Derek Watch is all right. Francis, who? 
and Francis and Francis and Carney. Well, that's his only route to get a few quid now, isn't it? Old war. I could see him against Francis. Can you, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see Wardley's role in all this, Ken? Well, he's just fought. So uh, th- there's going to be a fight, you know, obviously in the, in February. That will be the Joshua Wilder card. I think he'll be on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he could be fighting somebody like Caballel next. Caballel's on the show anyway. So I uh, could probably see him fight 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 somebody like a Caballel next. That would be a good that would be a good fight for him. Uh I would like to see him start fighting more world ranked fighters now. Would you? Yeah. You know, you've got uh, you've got Frank Sanchez, Junior Fawness, you've got Hergovic, uh Demore, you've got Makmadov, who who's fighting Caballel. You've got Dubois Miller, you've Parker Wilder, you've any of these fighters in there that that he could fight next. Maybe Joseph Parker next. What about Miller with these drug issues and that, Kent? Do you think it's in bad taste him getting a slice of the cake, the Saudi fruit bowl? I don't like big pharmacy Miller, but he's there to sell a show. Yeah. He's there to sell the show. They've all got their hands in biscuit barrel, haven't they, Kent? Yeah, they have. They abs- Absolutely, they have. Hey, Have you noticed first thing that comes out of the mouth is thanking people like servants? <laughs> it was like, it's like Barry McGuigan. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Eastwood. Thank, thank you, Mr. Eastwood. Eastwood. It was like that, but on a bigger scale, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Definitely. It's embarrassing. Miller should thank his lucky stars. He's at the big table, shouldn't he, really? He's dreadful. I seen it. His last fight was absolutely. He was twenty four stone against Lucas Brown. Well, that's more than two of me. That dreadful, absolutely dreadful. His heart must you know, be working ten times a dozen. This is a guy. This is the guy that went uh, ten rounds with Bracamonte, and Fraser Clark knocked Bracamonte out, and about three weeks later, never. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like it's not like big pharmacy Miller is the exact same as he was before. Uh, he failed all those drug tests. Yeah, do you think Miller will fail this time? <laughs> me. Well, I don't know by the looks of him. I don't know by the looks of him sitting there with uh, Joe Gears yesterday. He literally took up half a half a city. What did you he, think he let... of uh, Daniel Dubois Dicky Bow? Everybody said he looked a dick, so he just said Wilder's got one on. So everybody said, Oh yeah, Dicky Bow's a cool. Uh fuck me. Flipping hack. He's just what? he just doesn't help he just doesn't help himself at times, so he doesn't. Oh, Daniel DeBar. Could you imagine no. being stuck on a plane with him? <laughs> <laughs> Try sitting next to Savannah and Yui for five hours. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Wouldn't it? You not get a word out then. You wouldn't get a word in. <laughs> no. It's laugh a minute, Kent, isn't it? We have to have a giggle, don't we? Have yeah, to it was... into little characters, haven't we, Kent? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and what good came of yesterday is, as you say, I actually I actually gravitated more to liking Joshua yesterday than ever before. Ever before. Well, what we got from yesterday, what I took from it, that Eddie's added something to his game, and we know what that is, don't we? Slurping. Slurp, <laughs> slurp, slurp. <laughs> hey, that's the title of this video, Kemp, part one. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Because that's what this is. Slurping on a massive scale that will never be forgotten. He's come in the back door, really, hasn't he, Russell? Back 